Hi, I'm Ryan Block, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Microsoft Zune. Uh, this is a, going to be a comprehensive interface walkthrough. So we're going to go through everything that you can pretty much go through on the Zune device. Uh, this isn't going to be including the uh, marketplace or the uh, storefront and the software. Uh, so let's uh, get straight to it because we've got a lot of ground to cover. Right here we've got the uh, front menu, so let's go into the music. Now if you're familiar with Portable Media Center 2, some of this stuff might look pretty familiar. This is uh, called the Twist Interface, uh, and as you can see I'm scrolling through those tracks there. So I've uh, selected Fatboy Slim from the list, this is just kind of at random, and uh, I'm going through some of the tracks here, uh, and I'm just going to pick one of those at random as well. Uh, so you have a couple of options, you have Send, Play, and Add to Quick List, uh, which should be pretty self-explanatory given the features. Uh, as you can see in the upper right hand corner that's uh, the volume meter and uh, you can pay attention to the uh, track progress meter which shows not only the time remaining but the time elapsed. So let's go into the uh, first song option screen. You've got your uh, track rating with stars up the top, uh, the song list right below that, shuffle mode, uh, the repeat mode for uh, the tracks on the list, as well as the send feature again, uh, so you can send the track once you're actually listening to it, and a flag feature for keeping track of notable tunes. So I've flagged that item there, and uh, as you'll see, there's obviously a great emphasis on album art and the visual aspects of this. Um, here I've got my current playlist, which is that album that I picked, uh, Gangster Chippin', and I'm kind of scrolling through there. Uh, so I'm going to go back out of here. Uh, you'll see up the top on the twist interface, um, that I had the album and I just sent that to the quick list. Uh, so I'm going to go back out. As you can see I'm kind of scrolling through a couple of other uh, artists and albums in there. Now I've uh, selected the quick list and I can see that I uh, inserted that song uh, into that list. So now I'm going to go back out and I've got a couple of other sample lists in there and I can scroll back through the main options. Now I'm in genre, so I can see the uh, various genres that uh, are according to the tracks that I have on the system. Now I'm uh, just going to scroll through these so I can see in Electronic and Dance, for example, I had that quick list of uh, albums. Uh, so now I'm going to go back out and into videos. Uh, the videos are not categorized by genre, but they're categorized by video type. Um, so I have a couple in here, music videos and movies. Um, as you saw there, I can quick scroll through those and uh, those letters pop up to help me navigate. Alright, so I've selected a music video, this one uh, by Granddaddy, and uh, obviously it's begun playing. Now one cool thing is I can overlay uh, music video or video information on top of this. And I've pulled that back and I can push it back again. Uh, it gives me a little bit of information about what I'm watching. And I'm going to come back out of here. You can see I can either resume it or I can play it from the beginning. That metadata is uh, still back in that front interface. These are some of the other titles in this category. And these are the movies that I have. Again, very similar to the Portable Media Center interface you might have seen on the Toshiba Gigabit S. So I've selected a movie here. Obviously no description available, as we saw right before selection. But uh, now I'm going to show you the fast forward features on this. Uh, you've got fast forward in the normal hold the button down technique, and then if you tap the button right, you will skip forward by 30, depending on how you like to do it. Let's come back out of there. All right, and let's take a look at some pictures. So you have a variety of different ways of viewing pictures, uh, some by folders, others by date. Uh, I chose to view by date here so I can kind of look through the pictures that are loaded onto my Zoom based on when they were taken. Um, pick January of last year. Uh, so you can just automatically enter into a slideshow and uh, progress that slideshow with the left and right buttons. Uh, unfortunately, the Zoom does not read EXIF uh, photo orientation data, so it kind of treats most of these photos as 4 or 3 and attempts to align them as, as it thinks that it would look best, uh, which obviously not all of those photos were optimally positioned, but 
still looks pretty good. And here we can go in through folders. And of course you see we can also send pictures to one another. Uh, those of course are not bound by the 3x3 three three restriction that sending music has. Just going to check out another slideshow here, this one uh, with some rock themed imagery. I'm going to come back out. So let's uh, move back and check out the radio feature. Obviously the Zune is equipped with an FM radio. Um, pretty simple radio interface. One of the cool things about the Zune is that it has RDS, uh, so it will give you some of the metadata about the track that you're listening to, as well as the radio station, uh, pending of course radio station support of the RDS feature, uh, so you'll have to watch out for that one. Scrolling through stations is pretty easy. Uh, it will have not only presets that you'll be able to set while scrolling through, but you can also uh, do a scan for active radio stations on your local airwaves. So right there you can see that menu where you can set up the uh, preset radio stations on your Zune. And uh, let's go into the community area. This is kind of where the interesting stuff happens. Uh, right here is where you can uh, check out the zunes nearby, you can check out the songs that people have sent you, uh, you can see what other people are doing. Uh, right here we can see that the brown zune that is in the room uh, is listening or watching that particular film. Uh, these are some of the files that were sent uh, from other zunes that are uh, unfortunately protected by that 3x3 three three rule. And we can also see that other zune is listening to the radio. Uh, a little bit more about that in a second. So let's go to the settings. Uh, first of course is turn wireless on and off. Very useful because the zune comes with wireless automatically enabled. You're going to need to be able to turn that off to conserve some battery life. Uh, so in the music section you have some equalizers, uh, then default shuffle and repeat options for those tracks. In the pictures area, you've got your transitions and your picture shuffle. Pretty straightforward. In the display area, you've got your themes, uh, your zoom backlight for also for power saving purposes and brightness, and then you have a couple of TV options for when you use the TV out. Fortunately, I set mine here to uh, one second, so it's going to kind of flicker on and off as I. Uh, play around with it for a moment. You've got your zoom sounds, and you've got your radio options. Now that one that I scrolled through there really quickly was the uh, detailed status, but let's check this out here. So this is the Zune hardware version. Interesting if you'll note that that's uh, Hardware Revision 2. wonder what Hardware Revision 1 was like. So I'm actually going to pop back in here real quick and change back that backlight setting so it doesn't drive all of you people crazy like it was driving me nuts. Uh, so that online status can be changed to reflect the level of detail that you want other users to be able to see as to what you're doing. Uh, and we'll go in through storage. Uh, you can see just basic storage readout of what you're using and how much space that's uh, consuming. And of course a few legal notices in here. So that's pretty much the lion's share of what you're going to see using the Zune. Uh, next up we're going to take a look at sharing some tracks between a couple of devices. Uh, we're going to expire the 3x3 three three and then share some photos. So here we've got a couple of zooms, uh, blue on the right and white on the left. Uh, the white on the left is going to be the receiver and the blue is already starting to go through some tracks and uh, going to select something to send on over. So going to scroll down to send on the right as you can see. It's going to search for the devices that have Wi-Fi enabled in the area. And now it shows brown and white. Since we have all three colors present, it's going to pick white. It's connecting. You'll see that prompt over on the left, and we'll say accept. And then it's transferring over that music. It takes a few seconds per song. And it uh, gives a little message on the left saying that you have a song, you have three plays in three days. 
So now if I uh, go through, I'm not going to actually see that song in my tracks, in my playlist, because of course that was shared with me. Uh, but where I will see that is in the community area. So again, it's not going to be in with the rest of your music. It will only live in that area where files coming in from Wi-Fi will uh, reside and everything that is going to be there uh, that is a uh, music file will only be playable 3x3. Three three. Uh, it's probably also worth noting that you won't be able to transfer any videos via Wi-Fi. This is music only. So I'm in that inbox and there is my track. If you caught it, it said I have three plays or three days left. So now I'm going to actually go through this really fast. I'm going to cut out in just a moment here so you don't have to watch me uh, try to expire my three plays in three days and we can see exactly what it is that happens when you run out of your three plays. Okay, so I am just about done here expiring those three plays. For reference, in order to expire a play on a song, you have to get halfway through or play a minute of the track. And now when I go back, it says that it is expired. So the song can no longer be played, uh, though it will live in the player in metadata. Um, so if I ever want to go back and figure out that one song that I got from that person that one time, uh, but that I obviously no longer have, then uh, it will actually keep a catalog of that both on the player and on the uh, host software as well. So next we're going to check out some simple photo sharing. This will be the last part of the uh, Zune video. Now blue on the right is going to select some pictures to send over. Uh, essentially the exact same process as sending over some tracks. Just uh, pick what you want, hit send. This is a batch of, I believe, nine photos. Find the zoom device. It's asking to accept, and then I will get those nine photos pretty quick. Obviously, those are not going to go in the inbox. Those are going to go in my photo library in a portion tagged uh, as necessary with, I guess in this case, graffiti. And uh, here I'm actually going to take that photo that was just sent to me and apply it as my background. Simple enough process. I'm going to go back out to the front. And now it's my background. So that was basically the rundown of most of the common features that you're going to have with the Zune. Uh, we're going to take a look at some point in the near future uh, with the client software as well as the storefront and player. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that as well as for all of the rest of the latest coverage on Engadget, Engadget Mobile, and Engadget HD. Thanks for watching.